low on numbers today. Just wondering what was going on that I've missed out on. So, uh, which is a great shame. Hopefully you've got your notice sheet. Uh, stir up Sunday, next Sunday. Get those puddings ready, if you haven't already done so. Uh, read more about that on the front. Sunday school leaders meeting this evening, 7 o'clock, at the vicarage. Pop-up shop on the 2nd of December to try to get rid of good quality items that you no longer need but somebody else can make use of in aid of charity. Um, and then we're going to decorate the Christmas tree in St. Aidan's Hall uh, in time for Cafe Church and Christmas uh, Coffee and Crack on Thursday, the 7th of December at 7.30 and there'll be Christmas refreshments served. Um, and then you can see this week we've got the World Day of Prayer prep meeting on Monday, Christmas choir practice on Tuesday and Bible study on Wednesday. Hopefully you've all got one of those. If you haven't, there's some at the back, um, but some of you may have got them by email and all that sort of stuff. It's communion this morning, so we will gather around the Lord's table together. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. We're going to sing hymn number 86, Come and See the Shining Hope. Please be seated. We're going to miss this little bit because the youngsters aren't here and I wouldn't want to bore you. No, I'm not going to share my advent calendar with you after all. But we come to God in penitence and sorrow for our sins. Be silent before the Lord God for the day of the Lord is at hand. You are children of light. Therefore, put away the deeds of darkness. For the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. O Lord, we have set our iniquities before you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our secret sins in the light of your countenance. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Neither our silver nor our gold will save us on the day of your judgment. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> but God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. For we are forgiven our sins, brought back from death to life, and born again as children of light. Therefore, let us live in that light. Amen. Now, a couple of weeks we did that. Uh, a week ago, we did the Peruvian Gloria. Do you remember it? Good. Do you remember it? Good. So let's stand and glory, give glory to God for our forgiveness and His goodness to us. So you're going to sing back whatever I sing. Yeah. So glory to God. Glory to God. Glory in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory in the highest. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Christ Jesus. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. And together. Hallelujah, amen. Brilliant, well done. Thank you, everybody. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for our prayer for today. Ever living God, before the earth was formed, and even after it shall cease to be, you are God. Break into our short span of life and show us those things that are eternal that we may serve your purpose in all we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So we have our first Bible reading, and then we have the Gospel straight after. Our first reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to 11. It can be found on page 1188 of the Pew Bibles. Now, brothers, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And while people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you brothers are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You're all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep but let us be alert and self-controlled. Okay. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. 
But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whenever we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of Christ Jesus as written in Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 14. Glory to to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The parable of the talents. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called a servant and entrusted him with his property to them. And to one he gave five talents of money, and to another two, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. Now the man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And the man who had two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you had not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant, So you you, you knew that I harvested where I had not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money in deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have and abundance. And whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, this is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> It's that time of year when this programme comes on. Does anybody watch it? Anyone going to confess to watching it? It's all right, don't be embarrassed. But I want to suggest that Glenavy's got talent. Glenavy's got talent. Look around the congregation, look at the people behind me. We can see talent. And we'll come back to that right at the end. I don't know if you picked up on the 
very first word of the Thessalonians reading, it was now. And you know, now is important. Today is important. Right now is important. Now. There is no time like the present. I'm sure you've heard that lots of times before. But now is the important time. Now is the time to use the words of Jesus in the Gospel parable when we are either good and faithful servants or we are wicked and lazy servants. And our future, our future judgment depends on now. Our future judgments, whether we're good and faithful or wicked and lazy, all depends on how we serve now. So now is a really important word and time. Now. And the future reward is either come and share your master's joy or throw this useless servant into the darkness outside. Now, I don't know about you, but I know which one I'd rather hear Jesus say to me. And it depends on how we serve now. That's what it depends on. Now. And we need to be ready because we don't know when the master will return. We read that in the parable. At some time, the master returned. We don't know when Jesus is coming back and we need to be ready. As Thessalonians says, now brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. A thief in the night comes unexpected, don't they? A thief in the night. And we need to be ready. Let us be awake and sober. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. But he is coming back as he had promised. And we will need to stand before him and give an account with our talents and give an account to him. That gospel parable says, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. That's what's going to happen. At some time, unknown to us, not even the angels know, Jesus is coming back. It could be in a minute. It could be years. Only God himself knows. But he's coming back. And in the parable, God gives each according to his ability. Not too many, so they'd be wasted. And not too few, so they would be frustrated. And the master expected them to be careful and hardworking, to be diligent in the use of those talents he gave them. Not wasting time trying to work out when the master's going to return. I don't know if you remember when you were a kid, you know, or maybe you've done it with your own kids, tidy your room, yeah? And you sit in your room, and then you hear the footsteps up the stairs. And you go like billy don't you, to try and tidy your room up before your parent comes in that room. It's not like that looking over your shoulder, thinking, oh no, Jesus is coming. Because we don't know when he's coming. We need to be ready. Not wasting time trying to work out when the master will return. And I'm sure you've all seen those programs on TV or on flyers, maybe through your door or whatever it is. Jesus coming back and such and such a date. What a load of rubbish. Because nobody knows. Not even the angels. But one thing is for sure. He is coming back. And we need to be ready. The servant given five talents, the servant given three talents, received equal reward. Come Share your master's joy. Isn't that incredible? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. Can you imagine having those words said to you from Jesus? Wouldn't that be amazing? Those words ringing in your ears. Come and share my joy. It's certainly the words I want to hear. Praise God. But the servant given one talent. He was lazy and unproductive. And what happened to him? Throw this useless servant into the darkness outside. I don't want to be thrown into the darkness outside of God's kingdom. And I'm sure you don't too. We've got to be ready for when he returns. 
What about risks and investments? I don't know much about investments, to be honest, but I always know the adverts tell you that your investment can go up and down. There's always a risk. Is that right, Stephen? Yeah. There's always a risk element. That they can increase or decrease according to the market. God is the master risk taker. God has invested in you and me generously. God has taken that risk with you and me. I wonder if his investment is going to go up or down in you and me. He has entrusted us with talents. Now, often we think of those as just the gifts that you and I have got. If I can sing or play an instrument or maybe I'm good at acting or baking or all these sorts of things, the finances, whatever it might be. But it's the whole person. God has entrusted everything to us. God has given us his only son as an investment for our future. That's his investment. He gave Jesus his only son as an investment for my life and yours. And he took a risk. And it's up to us if we respond to that invitation. Why? Because he wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants us to be reconciled to him. That's why he took that risk. And having taken that risk, he left us with responsibilities and talents. It's not like we can acknowledge Jesus our Saviour and Lord and then sit on our backside for the rest of the time until we get to heaven because we've got our ticket. No. We have a responsibility and talents to use in the kingdom of God until he returns. We don't know when the master is returning. We simply know that he is. Scripture testifies to this. Jesus clearly states that no one will know the exact time of his return in Matthew 24. Therefore, we should remain in a state of anticipation and readiness. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Isn't that true? If you knew a thief was going to come and break in, you'd stay up and stop him, wouldn't you? You'd be awake. We need to be awake, ready. Luke says, but watch yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the old earth. Stay awake at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. You and I will have to stand before the Son of Man. And then Revelation, behold, I'm coming soon, being in my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. We need to be awake and sober and ready I wonder what the master will find when he returns. What will he find me doing? What will he find you doing? I wonder. Quite a challenge, isn't it? I wonder, will he find you active or afraid? Like the one with one talent. Master, I was afraid. I know you and me are buried it. Will he find you investing all that he's given you? Or will he find you idle? Will he find you serving? Or will he find you sleeping? God wants us to be active, investing and serving, awake and actively using what he's generously given to us. Interesting, sorry, investing in all that the kingdom of God we have for the kingdom of God and its growth. As my dad used to say, you can't take it with you. And I was listening to a radio, Premier Christian Radio the other day, and I was quite taken. I mean, they were talking about wills and stuff. But then they talked about leaving a spiritual legacy. And I was quite taken with that. What spiritual legacy are you leaving? 
What spiritual legacy are you leaving? Serving, serving those around us in church, in our community, and further afield, wherever God takes us. Taking risks with what God has done for us, by what he has blessed us with. He blessed us with his only son. And in Ephesians it says, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Now I can't take that in, it's too vast to comprehend. But God has blessed you and I with every blessing in Jesus Christ. And what are we doing with it? What are we doing with it? God wants us to be active, to be investing, and to serve, be serving. Stepping out of our comfort zones. And you know, if we become like that one servant who only had one talent and buried it, it's time to dig up your talents. It's time to dig up your talents. Wherever you've buried them, or wherever you've screwed them away for a rainy day, that one day, I've got a lot of stuff in my loft that's for one day, but I need to dig out and dispose of. But God wants us to dig out and use. Use in his kingdom. Ganevi's got talent. Look around this room. Think of all the other people. What are yours? And where are they? What are your talents? What are your gifts? What are your treasures? What are your time? What's your finance? What is it that God's blessed you with in Jesus? And where are they? Are you active? Are you investing in the kingdom of God? Are you serving in the kingdom of God? Or are they just dug in a hole for a rainy day? What will the master find you doing when he returns? What will he find me doing? Now, just a gentle reminder that all these things, you can't earn your faith. Salvation is a gift of God by faith in Jesus Christ. And that's where it starts. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. God is a God of grace. It's never too late to start over. But we'll also have to give an account to him. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Isn't that the words that you want to hear? When you stand face to face and give account? There is no time like the present. Now is the important time. Now is the time to use the words of Jesus in the gospel parable when we are either good and faithful servants or wicked and lazy servants. The future judgment, our future judgment, depends on now, here and now. Future judgments, good and faithful, wicked and lazy, all depends on now and how we serve. Not next week, not tomorrow, not next year, whatever. It depends on now. Are you active? Are you investing? Are you serving? We're going to sing together the kingdom of God, which is 651 in the book. Let's stand together.
invite you to join me in the words of the creed. We believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit now as Jenny comes to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider all that you are and how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and richly as you want us to live. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps be misunderstood to risk by loving those whom other think, others think worthy only of hate, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Help us be faith-filled and to desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. Make us ones who share in both word and deed that which you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the church here today, that it may encourage all its members to discover, develop, and use all their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are poor in body or in spirit, for those who are oppressed and heavy laden, and for those who are sick or in despair. Minister, O oh God, by your Spirit and by us to all those for whom we have prayed, and help us walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this short table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same, Lord, 
whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat his body and drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Would you please stand? <clears throat> Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. So as we gather around the Lord's table, we're going to sing, Take My Life and Let It Be, number 624.
present. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all, we, of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. You taking, taking bread, you gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon this bread and this wine and be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen. 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 Please be seated. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Lord Jesus Christ, have we, as we have proclaimed your death by eating this bread and drinking this cup, help us to wait for you, to wish for you, and to watch for you, so that when you come again, you will find us ready. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Would you please stand? <coughs> Since we belong to the day, let us put on the breastplate of faith and love and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Let us encourage one another and build each other up. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you always, now and forevermore. Amen. And we sing together at the name of Jesus.
Go now from this place to live in God's glorious kingdom of light and to be light to those around you. We will be that light. Amen.